Super Fun Stuff. Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. In today's print and paint video, I create one of the coolest bad guys from the Marvel Universe. This guy has battled likes at X-Men and nearly won. He also has beef with Wolverine, which at this point who doesn't? He is tall, durable, and drains the life out of his enemies. He became powerful after a weird experiment, and since he is already a killer, made him super dangerous. And Dr. Ock may be his long lost tentacle cousin. So who do you think it is? I may have stumped some of you this time as he isn't the most popular villain, but it's Omega Red. Omega Red was first created in 1992 by the famous Jim Lee and John Byrne. His real name is Arkady Gregorovich Rozovich, obviously Russian, and he was a serial killer who was captured and experimented on. Apparently the Russians wanted to create their own super soldier like Cap, and this was the result. The Russian government also tried to replicate adamantium, and ended up making a close synthetic equivalent called carbonadium. It isn't as strong as adamantium, but it's darn near close. They infused Omega Red's body with the stuff to form the large retractable tentacles. But at the cost of the carbonadium, it's continually poisoning him. So why doesn't it just kill him? Well, to survive, he drains the life out of people using a specialized pheromone. This allows him to absorb energy, which he can increase his healing abilities and keep him going. A device called a carbonadium synthesizer can stabilize the effects of the poisoning, but it was stolen and he points a lot of fingers at people like Wolverine for that. So he wants to find it and search for people who may have it. On top of that, Omega Red has trained in various combat. Super strong, he's fast, he's durable, you name it. And maybe as strong as superpower is, he's actually very intelligent and he is seen managing criminal organizations across the world. Omega Red is no joke when it comes to bad guys. One of my favorite comics with Omega Red is when he was first introduced. Here's one of my favorite comic book covers, where Omega Red and Wolverine are duking it out. Amazing drawing by Jim Lee. Side note, did you know that Omega Red was in the Deadpool 2 movie? They barely used him, but he was in the prison scene. Maybe it's a good thing they didn't use him too much though, he looks pretty stupid. Let's make Omega Red and print out a model. There are hardly any models for this guy, several from ArtStation but no real printable ones. I found one. This model created by 3D Figure depicts the battle between Omega Red and Wolverine. The beauty of this model is that the artist perfectly sculpted these guys out. They're dynamic, look spot on, and the best part can be printed. So I know this isn't a free model, but it was $3 for two characters, and I think it's worth the price. Even though you really aren't supposed to sell these copyrighted characters like this. Using Mesh Mixer real quick, I split the model up a bit so I can print out Omega Red separately. It's a cool diorama, but I want them individual models. After that, I print them out in a basic gray resin. He really came out great and I didn't have to fix anything on him. The pieces are thick enough so they aren't fragile, which is also awesome. First step I do is base him. Since he has a rock under his foot, I want to make sure that I cover up with my basing material before finish painting him. So I take a small base and put cork on top. Then I pin him to the spot that I want. I could just leave it like this, but the rock on his foot sticks out and doesn't look right. So I take half torn pieces of cork and start putting it on the base. I primarily do it around the rock under his feet. Going through, I get the base pretty nice, hiding that rock edges. I decide to create a little ravine on both sides using an X-Acto knife to make it a bit more interesting. Now we add primer to him and the base. Because this character has a lot of red and white, I decide to go over the entire model with a coat of white. I want it to be a flat white so my colors are brighter later on. And now, it's super white. Might as well finish the base using a pewter gray, a strong wash, and dry brushing of light grays, necrotic flesh, and white. Plus a dark pigment at the end to give depth. Now let's paint the mini. This guy has primarily four colors, red, silver, white, and yellow. We already have our white done, so let's start with red. I go around his outfit painting all the red bits. I take my time to be careful to only get the red in the correct spots. The red's done. I move to the silver now. Again, I just take my time to make sure I don't undo what I already did. So in my case, red covers white really well, so mistakes are harder to cover up. Silver covers up red really well, so I need to make sure I don't mess this up on the red. Then I move to the yellow for his hair. Now my base colors are done. Super simple so far. On to the washes. And here you may freak out. White is a weird color to accent. Omega red skin is supposed to be really pale. The one color that makes white look really super bright is blue. So I bravely take a blue wash and cover all the white areas. This basically makes him look like a smurf, but we'll go back and fix that later. For the red, I take a strong wash, not red this time, and cover his entire body. For the silver parts, I use black, pretty standard wash for silver. 
and for the hair I use a mid brown wash. After washes he looks good. Other than the blue skin, you could stop here if you wanted, but let's put extra effort to make him better. To make him better, we use highlights. I start with the red first. I take the same red I used earlier and touch up some of the areas. The strong wash darkens some spots that I want a bit brighter. After that red, I use a lava orange. I mix it with water to make it super thin. I go over all the accents points multiple times to brighten it up with orange. With the paint this thin, it creates a nice layering effect. For silver areas, I use plate metal and sterling silver. I try to accent parts similar to how the metal would shine. And for the hair, I use a brighter yellow to accent the strands. Now for the skin, usually I don't like doing this for skin, but this is a bit of a different case. I actually dry brush my white over it. I'm careful not to get on the red I just painted. The reason I'm using dry brush is that it layers well with the blue using this method. I could have done the same watered down paint, but this makes it more organic looking. Dry brushing gives a bit of a rough look. So I do go back with a small brush and touch up some of the areas with the white. Around the tentacles, I add white to the areas that would be brighter from the light. You're bound to get white on some of the red, but it's easy to fix if you need to. I finish up some of the small details like the teeth and the icons. That Omega headband took a bit to get right. I also added the smallest white dot to his eyes. Maybe a world record right there. And he's done. Omega red is pretty simple to paint. We only use a handful of colors, but he turned out great. With this mini, we took our time, try not to make too many mistakes, and use some basic techniques. With Omega Red done, who should I make next? Well, I have a surprise for you. In this episode, I'll be making two minis. Remember the 3D model we took Omega Red from, the one with Wolverine? Since we made one of the characters, why not make the other? This time it's my favorite comic book character growing up, Wolverine. Wolverine made his first appearance fighting the Hulk in 1974. Eventually he became pretty popular and was included with the X-Men. Since then, Wolverine has always had strong ties with the X-Men. You've probably watched the X-Men and Wolverine movies, so you have a good grasp on his backstory. What they fail in the movies though is portraying Wolverine correctly. In the comics, he is 5'3", stocky, bulky, hairy, and very animalistic. Of course he has healing powers, retractable claws, and an adamantium skeletal structure. But he is far from always being the good guy, and wouldn't give a second thought to killing a bad guy. One of his defining factors that made him cool in the comics was his berserker rage, which made him into an intense, unstoppable animal. Wolverine is awesome, and he has fought some of the craziest bad guys, including Omega Red. Wolverine even beat Death once. That's pretty crazy. So taking the same 3D model we had from earlier, let's create Wolverine. Again, the print turned out great. What I'm most thankful for was this model had decently thick claws, so they print well and they won't snap off. They're still tiny though, so we still need to be careful. Taking Wolverine, we do the same thing we did with Red. We base him. I make a basic cork base and do the same thing of covering the rocks around his feet a bit. I always add and sculpt the cork to make it more interesting. Now to the primer. I decide to finish up the base before working on the mini. I do the same type of base for Wolverine as all the other ones. The base is done, and now to the base colors. I start with yellow. I put a nice coat all over his yellow suit. Then I move to the flesh tone, then to the blue. I really take my time with the blue since I don't want to get it on the yellow. Yellow may be one of the hardest colors to fix, especially with blue. I move on to the red belt, and lastly, the silver for the claws. These are all pretty basic colors. Now to the washes. I apply a flesh wash on the skin. I apply a mid-brown for the yellow. This wash looks great with yellow and gives a nice rich color. Then I go with a strong wash for the red belt and I finish up with a black wash for the blue and silver parts. I want to keep the areas really dark and give more of a comic vibe. And the washes turned out great. It took the model from boring to amazing really quickly. To make it even better, I add some highlights. For the yellow, I take a brighter yellow and make it very thin. I then layer it all over his body and muscles. For the red belt, I first use a red to touch up spots and then a lava orange for color. Same goes for the blue. I take the same blue and touch up areas from the wash. Then I take the electric blue, thin that out, and layer some extra highlights. I take my time and select certain spots where I feel like the light would shine more. And lastly, the silver, where I take a plate mail silver and a brighter sterling silver. Just take my time and make thin accents. And he's done. At the very end, I decided to add a few more details like the eyes, teeth, and I took the time to paint the little hairs on his arms. That was really fun. So both Omega Red and Wolverine are done. Both models have a nice simple color scheme, and the models themselves have fairly large and simple details. 
but they still turned out awesome. Two characters I loved reading about growing up, and they were a lot of fun to create. I tried a few techniques that I don't normally do for things, like dry brushing for skin. I would still say that you shouldn't do it, but like Omega Red's case, there are exceptions. It mostly comes down to using the right color combinations for the job. Understanding your base colors, wash colors, and highlights. Plus, understanding your paint, like how I painted things bright white before applying certain colors. Before I finished the video, I noticed something not right about Wolverine. What was wrong was the color of the mask and stripes. They needed to be black like the classic look. So I painted those and made the stripes a little bit bigger. For our next print and paint video, we are going to continue making some villains. This guy is another criminal turned supervillain. He was introduced in the 60s and has fought the likes of Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and the Hulk. This guy even killed Spider-Man, well, once in a spin-off comic. He loves and hates the beach, and his arch nemesis may be the vacuum cleaner. I'll let you think about who it is. I hope you liked this video. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters, and thank you for watching.